Aircraft need two things to fly, lift to make the airplane go up and thrust to move the airplane forward. Back in the 1920s, airplanes used internal combustion engines, which is similar to a car engine, connected to propellers, which provided thrust. But aircraft have come a long way since then, and today we'll be looking at the modern jet engine, which provides thrust to almost every aircraft in the sky today. While jet engines are used in both commercial and military applications, there are distinct differences, such as the fact that a military jet engine is concealed inside the body of the aircraft, whereas commercial aircraft have the engines slung under the wing. This video will concentrate on military jet engines, but you can find out more about commercial jet engines by clicking the link in the description below. Modern fighter aircraft are a marvel of engineering. They're able to fly at altitudes 20 kilometers high and travel at supersonic speeds well above 2,500 kilometers per hour. The component that makes this possible is the jet engine. Gas temperatures in a jet engine can peak at one third of the sun's surface temperature, well above the melting temperature of the metal used inside the engine. The jet engine is an air-breathing engine, meaning it uses the air around us combined with burning fuel to produce thrust. To do this, the engine must first suck in the oncoming air. This is done by the first component we meet, the compressor. A compressor is similar to the desk or ceiling fan you might have on a hot day. The compressor squeezes the air down to a fraction of its normal volume. This is identical to covering the end of a syringe with your thumb and pressing down on it. The pressure increases and as a result the temperature inside the syringe increases. To ensure the pressure is high enough, there are usually multiple compressors. Here we have three. The parts between the rotating components are stationary blades which are used to redirect the air. At this point, we now have very hot, high pressure air. We now add fuel to increase the energy in the gas. Now, as we add fuel, the air becomes even hotter and expands. This is similar to putting a balloon over a bottle and dipping it in hot water. As the air warms up, it expands, increases in volume, and the balloon blows up. However, a jet engine is made of metal and will not expand. So instead, the air must now rush out the back as fast as possible since it has nowhere else to go. Before the air can zoom out the back, it must first pass through the turbine. Simply put, a turbine is a fan but designed to work in reverse. The rushing air causes the turbine to spin very quickly and it extracts energy from the air in the process. Remember I mentioned the first set of blades to compress the air at the beginning? Well, this turbine takes energy out of the air and then passes it to the compressor via a shaft. It's what provides the energy to turn the blades in the first place. The air is now blown out the back at incredibly high speeds. This extremely fast jet of air is what propels the aircraft forward. The actual mechanism is what's known as a transfer of momentum. It's the exact same effect that causes a balloon to shoot forward if you blow it up and let it go. The fast moving air pushes the balloon forward, similar to the engine pushing the aircraft forward. But what about those vicious flames coming out the back? That's the afterburner, and it's used to provide an extra thrust boost. The afterburner simply injects more fuel into the hot gas after it rushes past the turbine. Since the air is still extremely hot, the fuel combusts and expands again very quickly. This causes the air to rush out the back with visible flames and added thrust. When we add this extra fuel, we are yet again expanding the air, just as we saw with the balloon experiment. The engine now has to let a greater volume of air out the back, and to do so, it has a variable nozzle which opens at the rear. Hopefully you now know how these incredible machines work and found this video fun. Please consider subscribing for more fun videos in the future, and let me know in the comments below what you'd like to see next. Thanks for learning with me today, and I'll see you next time.